Wait if you could describe this cocktail in one word, interestingness. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> this is Troy. This is Nate. And using this crazy contraption from the heyday of the 1950s American cocktail party, we're going to try each one of its recipes and find out which one of these long-forgotten libations still stands the test of time. This is The Vintage Bartender. Hey, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of The Vintage Bartender. I'm Nate. I'm Troy. And we're going to continue our journey on exploring the 1950s Bar Aid Cocktail Rolodex and all 80 of its drinks to see which ones continue to stand the test of time. Yeah, you ready to do this? I'm ready to do this. Number nine. Number nine. Today, what is number nine? Today on the bar eight, number nine is what's called a B and B. A B and B. Very enigmatic name. Now those B's stand for something, of course. I believe they do. And they should. Otherwise, that'd be weird, right? That would be weird. Yeah. So this is a Benedictine and a brandy uh, aperitif after dinner drink. Yes. It's called a B and B. Benedictine. Never had Benedictine. I had never have either. Fresh bottle, first time trying it. Fresh. It goes Which back, man? it's got some history though. Does it? It goes back to 1510, <laughs> Benedictine. Uh-huh. Apparently, super secretive formula. Fair it's enough. made, nobody knows. But speaking of you know history, yeah. why don't we talk about a little history Let's of the B&B cocktail? Yeah, b and Let's start it back. Bang, history. Benedictine, half of the bees in the B&B cocktail is over 500 years old. It was first made by French monks for medicinal purposes in 1510. This after-dinner apartif is a secret blend of 27 herbs and spices with a touch of honey for sweetness. The B&B cocktail of equal parts brandy and Benedictine gained popularity from New York's historic 21 Club. It was so popular, in fact, that the makers of Benedictine bottled the cocktail and sold it as B&B. In fact, B&B outsells the undiluted original 9 to 1 by some estimates. Today, we're making our own B&B, so back to making cocktails. And we're back from the history. Good history, yes? Yes, I, I mean, I learned a little something. I did too. All right, yeah. shall we make this cocktail? Now let's make a B&B, yeah? Let's make a B&B. All right, pretty straightforward. Half Benedictine, which is our herbs and spices. With uh, a touch of honey. With a touch of honey, yes. Kind of meat-ish in, of sorts. So half of whatever we're gonna do of Benedictine, that we're doing a full with a one ounce. One ounce, one ounce. Benedict- Benedictine. And then uh, same ratio, half, if you will, of brandy. This is our standard E&J brandy that we've been using this years before. All right. Yeah, nice. Two nice. parts Two of parts. the cocktail. Couldn't be simpler. Add some ice. Add some ice and uh, serve in a liqueur glass with our characterizing. I don't know what that means. We're going to use these little Irish coffee glasses because they seem liqueur-ish and frankly, you know, appropriately sized for what we're doing here. All right. Got a good chill on her. Got a good chill. And then straight into a cocktail glass. It doesn't say, but I believe that's the move, I even though it so. hasn't gone through the trouble. Here we go. Here we go. B&B coming at you. Golden. A little golden a little syrup color. All right. All right. The B and B, Benedictine and Brandy. Okay. Not sure what to make of the color. I mean, I don't know what Benedictine, Benedictine we have here in a green bottle. So <laughs> I'm not sure what it's supposed to look like. I think it makes it a little darker than the Brandy. Fair enough. Smooth right. it out. Okay. B and B. B and B, first B and B. Let's try it out. Ooh, it's got a herbs. Little herbs and florally type nose. It does indeed. Mm-hmm. 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 Save the first sip. Oh. Well, in reverse. <laughs> first sip! <set. laughs> mm. So, wild. Okay. Let's see. I, I'm seeing the honey. I see where they get that from. Mm. It does have a, a honey sweetness that mm-hmm. kind of throughout. Mm-hmm. You taste a little bit of herby, sp- spicy ness. Yeah. It's a little sweet. It's a little sweet. Sweeter than I expected. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I can see why this is an, an after dinner yeah, uh, drink. Yeah, kind of dessert ish. Dessert esque. Yeah, palate cleanser. Maybe add some crazy, like the Benedictines from 1500, whatever. I mean, maybe add some crazy, like, you know, leg 
uh, like at the Ren 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 Fair (laughs) type of like (laughs) meal, you know, uh, time to contemplate the Middle Ages and have a B and B. But it's definitely a boozier thing. Like you have to be a drinker. Like no one starts off their drinking career with one of these things. No, this is your your season. You're a seasoned grizzled vet. Yes. Um. So. We've made our first B and B. We've tried it. Had our first sips. Yeah. But what we're here to discuss yes. as we go through the bar eight is: yes. Does the cocktail stand the test of time? Right. And this has a lot of time on it. It's yeah. it's been around it's been five four hundred and yeah. how many years? Yeah. So, um, does it stand the test of time for you, bro? What do you think? I think for me, well, this is a tough one for me because I want to. Hmm, for me personally, I'm going to say no. It's not the end of the test of time. I don't think it's a bad drink. Right. Just for me personally, yeah, this is not something I would really be like, ooh, I really want that after dinner. Fire me up one. Yeah. Just no. have a steak. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I really want to put it to bed with a, yeah. an herb and brandy cocktail. I think I would pass on the b Yeah. Uh, Sorry, 1510. <laughs> <laughs> it does it doesn't all last. Man. But I am still drinking, still drinking. so I don't, I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> oh, what it says about the cocktail. It says you have something liquid in front of you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and for you, does it stand the test for of time? For me, this is a no. It does not stand the test of time for me. Um, yeah, I can see why people would like it. There's, yeah. like, there's like ports and other things that people love, yes. and I, I just can't get on. Um, so I think it probably... Stands a test of time for somebody, but for me, it's a no. I'm, I would, yeah. I'm probably not going to go make me another one. No. If you're a port drinker, I could see it. Maybe liking this. I mean, if you're, if you take booze as your after meal move, I mean, I think it's right. Then up you're kind of in a different like yeah. level, right? And yeah, you probably might like that because it's got a little sweetness, yeah, a little interestingness with the Benedictine. Whatever you want to call it. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> That's a fair way to if say it. If you could describe this cocktail in one word. Interestingness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. B and B. B and there B. You go. There B and B in the books. <laughs> number nine on B. the bar aid. Yes, number nine on the bar aid. Um, not number one in our hearts. It is but not. That's but okay. We encourage you to try these items as we're making them tell us what you think yeah maybe you're one of those people that's like hey man best thing i've had yet great let us know in the comments love to hear about speak it speak about it let's find out but for this episode in particular the binge bartender that wraps us up and it so, does uh until next time i'm Nate. i'm troy and uh, we'll see you next time as we continue our journey exploring the bar eight cocktail all 80 number nine in the books that means we got 71 more to go. 71 more to go. Yikes. Good luck with that. Hopefully there'll be a lot of ones that stand the test of time. In there. I think so. Yeah. There we gotta be. All right. Until next time. Until next time. Acid reflux, man. It's, not work. it's, it's no work. joke. No joke. It's a silent killer. Yeah. <laughs> it's a silent killer. <laughs> it's a silent hand. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> you gotta Whoa. Oh, dude. Swallowed a little funny. Almost almost went bad. Don't throw up on me, bro. <laughs> I have very little requirements from my friends. <laughs> One of them is don't throw up on me. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> throw up on me once. Shame on you. <laughs> the belly laugh. The belly laugh. Uh, <laughs> I can laugh on cue. <laughs> <laughs> laugh track. Laugh track.